Just because you don't believe in something doesn't make it any less true, nor does it lose its power, nor does it save you from having any effects on you. This video is all about that. Let's go. We're talking in class one day, talking to some students, and I asked somebody, hey, do you have a charge? Like, are you charged positively, negatively? And the student said, I'm not a magnet. I was like, all right. So he said, no, I don't have it. It's like saying, no, how can I have a charge? I'm not a magnet. I don't, I don't have that. So I said, whoa, time out. So I taught physics, you know, years ago, and I really enjoyed physics. It's so beautiful, Lord. And there's some things I'll share here about physics and how, man, it just reveals how amazing God is. All right. But when he said, I'm not a magnet, I was like, Bro, so check this out. You, you watching this, you can believe you're not a magnet. He can believe he is not a magnet. And that's okay. You can believe whatever you want to believe. But that doesn't mean that your belief is true. Doesn't mean that, you know, it doesn't mean that it's true. Because watch this. Check this out. I'm going to get a balloon. A balloon. Here it is. I just blew it up. Regular normal balloon. And then I'm going to put it against this wall. No, well, it's not going to stick to the wall because the balloon is neutral. It doesn't have a charge. It's got positive and negative. It's balanced. This wall doesn't have a charge. He's positive and negative. He's balanced. Now watch this. If I get that balloon and I rub it on my hair, guess what's happening? My hair is losing electrons. This friction that's happening, like let's say it's two or whatever. I got one and I got two over here. Or let's say I got two and whatever. It's rah, rubbing. I lose one and now this one gains one. So I, I've, I've lost electrons. Well, if I, my hair lost electrons, where did the electron go? It went inside the balloon. So now the balloon has an extra electron, which means now this blue has a negative charge. So when I put this negative charge against this neutral wall, the positive ions, the positive parts, are going to attract that extra negative. It's going to want to go somewhere. So when I, whoo, I put it up against the wall and it sticks, it works because you have a charge. We are slightly charged. Your bodies, it's not just flesh and blood. I mean, yes, we are made of flesh and blood. We're also made of molecules and atoms and tiny things that we can't even see. And we are subject to those rules of things we can't even see. Just because I refuse to believe it doesn't make it any less true. It didn't make the balloon not stick just because I don't believe it. It worked. Did it not work? It totally worked. Gravity. Let's talk about gravity real quick. Easy one. You can choose not to believe in gravity. I don't believe in gravity. I don't. Yeah, okay. Th th that's just you. You fell down over there. I, can, I, I won't. I strongly don't believe in it. And let's say I try to go walk or I jump off of, I don't know, a roof or something where I'm hanging up lights and I fall down. Well, pfft. Okay, yeah, I fell down. I still don't believe in it, though. Something else, you know, I tripped on my foot. That, that's what my shoelace tripped me, not gravity. That didn't save me from the effects that gravity had on me. Me refusing to acknowledge it and believe in it didn't save me from falling off the roof. Well, I could blame it on something else. Well, it was my shoe. I slipped on this leaf that, or this twig that was on the roof. That's what it was. Well, if this floor wasn't so icy, I wouldn't have fallen. If I had better shoes, I wouldn't have fallen. In. But it's not gravity. I can make it up. I can blame something else. Anything but gravity. Because I, I don't believe in it. But did you see its effect on me? Can people see me and watch me fall? Yes. And to the ones that know, they know. Man, this guy, bro, you got, you're dealing with gravity. You need to figure it out. You can't be doing that type of stuff because gravity is going to pull you down. That's what it always does. Just like gravity, just like you carrying the charge, just like the little atoms and the molecules, all those little laws that happen that we, some we're aware of, some we're not aware of. But they are always in motion. They are always operating. There are spiritual laws. Biblical things that are always operating, always in motion. And we are not exempt from the, from the blessings that, that, that they happen or the cursings that may follow if we don't operate on those laws correctly. If we're not in right standing of those laws and we're not, we're not doing the correct thing, we're not abiding by the laws, then we're not exempt from their consequences just because I didn't know, I wasn't aware, I didn't know, uh, you know, not knowing is not an excuse. 
The Bible talks about some laws, you know, there, there's a, a, a tithe, all right? There's a tithe. You have to honor God. Give God a tithe. Give them a tenth of something. Tenth of what? Give them your time. Give them your money. Give them your energy. You're, you're blessing God with it because there's laws in it. It says, Lord, if you'll provide for me, if you'll give me cl uh, food, clothes, provision, you'll take care of me, keep me safe, all these things, Lord, then I will give you that. And God will do it. God says, test me. God says, God told the devil, don't test me on some things, but there's one thing you can absolutely test God in. That's test God with your tithe. He says, test me in this and see if I want to open up the windows of heaven and part a blessing. There is not room enough to receive it. What do you mean open up the windows? Part the clouds and just drop money on you? No, he can drop, he can do whatever you want. He can give you a great idea, a business idea that can, oh yeah, there it is. Or he can bless you with amazing health. I don't know. You, don't just limit God to only bless you with certain areas. You know what I mean? So God will open up the windows and pour out blessing that there is not room enough to receive it. He will make you the head and not the tail. He will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. When your stuff breaks down, when man, I just can't seem to have enough. That's because there is a spiritual law operating against you. You're under a curse. There's a curse operating under you. Okay, well, let's say I did give my time. I'm honoring God with my time. I'm doing everything. Okay, perfect. Well, the Bible says that all things were got together for good to those who love him. All right, my car broke about a month ago. My angel just went out. Oh, Lord, it's okay, Father. Man, we've been tithing. We've been doing everything. We are doing the best that we can of all the laws that we are aware of, spiritual laws and all that stuff, to make sure that we are on the right side whenever anything happens. Okay, cool. My car broke. And you know what, Father? God made a way to get us into a cooler car. I really like it, man. It's so cool. Thank you, Father, for that car, man. You're so good, God. Wah! Anyways, God made a way. When the bad thing happened, I said, it's okay. Why? Because I know, I know, I am aware that I have done these things that God has asked that I am aware of. I am doing, I'm in the right standing. So yes, sir, Father, this thing will work out together for good to those because I love you, Lord, and I trust you. You got it. I know you got it. I don't know what's going to happen. I didn't see it. But thank you, Father, God hooked it up. So there's, there's laws about anger. There's laws about, you know, lust, joy. There's laws about everything. Everything. Sadness. There's laws. There's ways on how to deal with this stuff. And there's ways to be free from it. There's also warnings of what happens if you're not free from it. There's things about bitterness, resentment, prayer. There's tons of stuff about love, joy, peace. Gender. There are laws about everything. There are so many, it's so tough to make sure. Wait, 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 where is this at? Is this, oh, I want to make sure I'm in good. I don't know. Okay, Jesus said, look, bro, I know it's going to be tough for you. I remember all this stuff. Here, let me give you the biggest law, the most important commandment. Here's the hugest law. It's love. All right, love. Love God. First thing you have to do is love God first. Love God first. Make sure you're honoring God first. However that looks like in your season of life right now, Love God first, wherever you are, and he will build that up. He'll bring that up. All right, once, you're, once you've got that, then God says, you love me. Love the Lord your God with all your soul, might, strength, all that stuff, your power, your mind. Love me. Then, once you love me, love your neighbor. Love everyone the way that you love yourself. Treat them the way that you would want to be treated. So love God first. And then love others with the same kind of love you would love yourself with. That's the most big. That kind of sums it all up. If you are doing those things, you will be fine. Now, more specifically, there's a scripture that says, The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, gentleness, kindness, goodness, patience, long-suffering, self-control. And then it says after that, it says, Against such things, there is no law. Against those things, against these fruits of the Spirit, these nine fruits of the Spirit, there is no law. So if you are doing these nine things, you won't ever be on the wrong side of any spiritual laws that are happening. You'll always be on the good side. When it's time for the payment to go through, all right, let's see, how do we do today? You'll be great. You have great credit stored up. All right? So just want to make it aware. Just because you don't believe in it doesn't make it any less true, nor does it weaken it. Nor does it save you from the effects that these laws are going to have on you. All right? When in doubt, just love it out, man. Love God. Love God. Honor God. Love people. Honor people. 
Just love them. Love, 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 and you'll be great. You'll be fantastic. Because if I love my neighbor, I'm not going to cheat him out of a sale. I'm not going to raise the price on this to, uh, yeah, well, oh, thanks for letting me buy it for 100 ah, Even though it's worth 10000 and I know that. Hey, man, look, I want to honor you. How much do you want for this? All right, cool. I'm going to be honest. Oh, how much do you want to pay me? Well, honestly, dude, here's what I have. I'm not trying to rip, I'm not trying to rip you off. I'll give you 10 cents for that. No, man, I'm going to do that. I want to honor you. Hey, here's what I have. This is my best I can come with. I'm sorry if it's not what you want. Maybe you can find something that can give you that. You know what I mean? Just always being honest and loving, stuff like that. Because against those things, those nine for the spirits, there is no law. And if you can't remember, just love. As long as you walk in love, good. Love God, then love your neighbor as yourself. All right, that's it. Let's go get a man. Woo! Thank you, Father. Let's go. Thank you, Father. It's our honor. All your sons, all your daughters give you praise. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father.